We're going to look at a Falcons mock draft that has Atlanta moving up to number five. But first, I thought you guys might enjoy a little peek behind the curtain. These are some of our YouTube analytics over the last 28 days. And if we take a closer look here, you can see that the number one video picked up a little over 200 subscribers. Now, we are sitting a little over 100 subscribers away from reaching 19,000. So let's break our record over the last month and let's pick up 250. 50 new subs. What's going on, everyone? Welcome into Falcons today. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And on today's show, we're going to talk about the possibility, let's put it, of Atlanta trading up to number five overall because a new mock draft came out from someone with a blue check mark that had that going down. So I want to talk about the possibility of the Falcons getting Mr. Drake May at number five. But before that, I do want to at least shed some light into how I personally evaluate all the big mock draft gurus out there. And these are my personal rankings. You may like some other people more than me. That's not an issue. I'm not here to debate you on that. But my first uh, my number one mock drafter would be Daniel Jeremiah from NFL.com. I think he's one of the best in the biz, clearly. Not far behind, maybe almost like 1A and 1B, would be Dane Brugler from The Athletic. Then I have Mel Kuyper from ESPN at number three. Number four, I have Lance Zerline from NFL.com, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And then at number five, I've got everyone else. These are my top four right here, and there's a big drop-off after that. So Lance Zerline cracking the top four. Well, it's worthy of breaking down in depth his recent mock draft. So with that being said, let's check it out because it's his first one of the year and he had Caleb Williams going number one overall to the Bears. Jane Daniels going number two to the Commanders. That's who Cliff Kingsbury, Kingsbury gets to groom. Number three, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to the New England Patriots. Number four, Roma Dunze off to the desert to be the next Larry Fitzgerald. And finally, and most importantly, with the fifth overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Drake May, quarterback, University of North Carolina. So my first question, and probably what you guys are asking as well, is how likely is it for Drake May to fall to number five? Every mock draft we have seen has seen him go number two, or at worst, number three. So is he really going to fall to five? And I'm a JV history buff. So I did look back at some previous NFL drafts, and there have been quarterbacks who have slipped more than people anticipated in the months leading up to the draft. Last year, people had Will Levis going top five. The guy didn't even go round one. Fell to the 34th overall pick, 33rd overall pick to the Tennessee Titans. Year before that, who remembers Malik Willis could go round one. Dude didn't go until round three, okay? Justin Fields to the Chicago Bears at number 11. A lot of people had him going top 10. Escaped the top 10, went 11th. Year, a few years before that, Josh Allen. I'm old enough to remember Josh Allen was going to be the first overall pick by the Cleveland Browns. Ultimately, in the, like, the week leading up to the draft, there was a change in Northeast Ohio, and they went with Baker Mayfield, and Allen fell all the way to number seven. And then in 2017, Deshaun Watson, when he fell all, to, all the way to the Houston Texans, and a lot of people had him going top 10, fell to 12. So I can get behind a QB falling, even though right now it might not seem very plausible because all we do is see these mock drafts and they're all consistent of who goes 1, 2, and 3. I personally don't believe Drake May escapes the top 3, but I do have a life rule which is when it comes to the NFL draft, there really isn't a bad take on where someone can go because all these mock drafts, all these draft projections, go look at the actual draft, and they're hardly anywhere near the final results. So if someone says this guy's going to go top 10 or this guy's not going to go top 10, I might think they're insane. I might think they're crazy, but I'm not going to say that they are out of bounds for having that opinion because that's the NFL draft. Expect the unexpected. So while I personally don't think Drake May goes outside of the top three, let alone fall into number five, I am a believer of don't say anything's impossible when it comes to the NFL draft. Now, before we talk more about Drake May in general and whether or not this would be a great pick for the Falcons, which, spoiler, it would, 
between Drake May and Jaden Daniels, because I don't see Atlanta jumping up all the way to number one, which quarterback would you rather have? The UNC QB or the LSU Heisman winner? Let me know down below in the comment section. But let's talk about Drake May today. So he's six foot four, 230 pounds, huge frame. And despite having that big frame and great arm talent with the ability to make all the throws inside the numbers, outside the numbers, down the field, intermediate passes, he's actually a sneaky good runner. And you might not think, oh, big, tall, white guy, no way he can move well. Um, he can. And so that's definitely a, a, a quiet pro that I don't think gets enough attention, which is Drake may, may not be a Lamar Jackson. Actually, I'll say he is not a Lamar Jackson type quarterback, but he is a quarterback that can get some design runs for him. I think of him as a Daniel Jones, which I know it's fun to make fun of Daniel Jones, but he is a pretty good runner after all. And think of Daniel Jones with better arm talent. Now the con for Drake may is he doesn't know when to cut his losses. What do I mean by that? Well, there are times when Drake May extends plays and throws bad interceptions when the smart play was to just throw it out of bounds. There's times when he tries to prolong plays and he ends up taking a worse sack than if he just maybe stepped up in the pocket a little bit and got back to the line of scrimmage. So Drake May, as a prospect, I'm a big fan of. I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback in this league. There are often times where quarterbacks are the second or third overall picks in the draft or second or third quarterbacks taken in the draft, and that's just out of teams forcing QB picks because they need a quarterback, not necessarily that that quarterback is deserving of being the second QB taken. I think Drake May, in pretty much any other year except for Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence over the last I don't know, 10 or so years, might be the first overall pick. But because Caleb Williams is in this draft class, He's going to be the second QB taken most likely. However, I'm still very optimistic about his career. Now, Drake May, when you look at his stats over the last two years as a starter at Chapel Hill, there was definitely a regression. I think it's somewhat fair to say from 2022 to 2023. Now, I am not a believer in college stats are great indicators to how good players are going to be in the pros, right? It's unfair to evaluate or compare uh, Drake May stats to Caleb Williams' stats and Jaden Daniels' stats because they worked with different receivers, different linemen, different conferences, different schedules, different everything. But I do think there is some shreds of truth to why was there such a noticeable regression from his 2022 stats to his 2023 stats, right? The raw numbers right there, they're not super encouraging, but I'm not going to be discouraged from taking Drake May with the second or third or fourth or fifth overall pick, because I do think he is a slam dunk quarterback. Now, before we get on to the rest of today's show, I do have to tell you guys about our sponsor today, which is Game Time. If you are trying to go to the big game next week in Las Vegas, or you want to go catch a Hawks game or any other sporting event in your local area, download Game Time today. And when you use code FalconsChat, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. But if you are hoping to go or trying to go to the big game in Las Vegas, you can actually get $100 off. Now, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like $100 off a ticket from the big game is going to dramatically change what you're spending. But I look at it as, hey, with game time, they're going to spot maybe your parking or they're going to spot your first and second round of the concession stands. So if you're going to go, you might as well get... I don't know, 100 bucks extra back in your pocket when you use code VEGAS100. So download Game Time today. Like I said, use it to get tickets to more than just sporting events. If you're in Atlanta and you want to go to the Fox Theater, I know Hamilton's in town, or you want to go see a comedy show, or any other event in your local area, wherever that may be, make sure you download Game Time today and use promo code FALCONSCHAT for $20 off. Or if you want to go to the big game, use code VEGAS100 for $100 off your ticket. All that information is in the comments and description of today's video. Now let's get back on track to this trade idea, which has the Falcons moving up from 8 to number 5 to take Drake May. Because unfortunately, Lance Zerline, who's the NFL uh, you know, uh, mock draft guy we're following today, he did not include what that trade would look like. If I had to take an educated guess, I think it could look something like this. The Falcons get the fifth overall pick. 
and the Chargers, who had the fifth overall pick, move back to eight. And in exchange for falling back a couple of spots, they pick up Atlanta's second round pick and a future fifth. So I think going from eight to five is close enough where you don't have to give up a future first round pick. And that's a huge score for the Falcons. It may not cost you a second. It could be a third. But I think if this trade is going down mid-draft, like it, let's just picture it's draft day, it's round one, and everyone is freaking out. Drake May is still available after the fourth pick of the draft. The Chargers' phones are going to be ringing off the hook. So if they are looking to trade back, they definitely want to trade back to whoever's closest to them to maximize their pick this year. And they are probably going to know the market and say, maybe it costs you a third of this trade goes down in March, but it's going down right now. And I've got three other teams on the phone with us. So give us your second round pick this year and toss in a fifth in the future because why not? So I know it's, you know, not the most expensive trade package, but it's not something that's too late. You're giving up a future or this year's second and a future fifth. Would you do this trade? First round pick swap, which you're not really giving up a first. You're just swapping first. But you are giving up a second and a fifth to get your future franchise quarterback, hopefully. To me, I do this in a heartbeat. So I am all in for a draft trade-up. But, and there's one big but, and it's not the one like Sir Mix-a-Lot likes. There is a, a catch. How likely is it? that the Atlanta Falcons go into the draft in April with Justin Fields not on their roster and just standing pat at number eight overall with the hopes that Drake May falls and they could trade up, right? The issue is the Falcons have until now, well, really since the day the season ended, until ballpark March 9th. That's like a week before the new league year starts. That's when a lot of the trades kind of start going down. That's when Russell Wilson went down, traded, things like that. They haven't from now until then to make a decision on Justin Fields. Because if they decide we want Justin Fields, well, they can, I wouldn't say easily pull off a trade, but they can make a trade work. And then, of course, they go into the draft and they're not the team looking up to trade for Drake May. But... If they don't trade for Justin Fields, and he goes to, say, Pittsburgh, okay? Now Atlanta goes into the draft, and if they didn't sign Kirk Cousins or Baker Mayfield, they are still looking for a quarterback, and they are banking on one falling and them making an in-draft trade? That's a very, very dicey decision. Now, for a moment, we could talk about Fields because this has been one of the hottest topics in Atlanta sports for the last couple of months here. And I know that the room is not in agreement on Justin Fields. If you've watched our content before, you know where I stand. I'm a believer in Justin Fields. He has an amazing ability to run the ball, but I don't think what he gets enough credit for is the velocity and accuracy of his downfield passes. His ultimate downfall have been the turnovers and holding on to the ball for too long, but with good coaching, and he has not had that in Chicago, and he will get that with Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson, I do think those numbers and those problems can subside. But it is a huge gamble to pass on Justin Fields, right, for Raheem Morris and company to go, we don't want Fields, we want to get a quarterback from the draft, okay? I can understand that. But to not make a pre-draft trade, you hope that one of them is available at five? Like, if that trade with the Chargers happened in March, who's to say it's not going to go quarterback, 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 one, two, three? So now you trade it from eight to five for what? To give up a future second and a fifth so you can maybe get a better wide receiver or edge rusher? That doesn't seem very intelligent, in my opinion. So now you're banking on a quarterback to fall during the draft? What if one doesn't fall? What if it goes, like I said, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and you didn't trade for Justin Fields, you didn't sign Kirk Cousins or Baker Mayfield because those two guys returned to their teams, and now you're sitting there at eight, and what, you're going to force a quarterback pick of like Bo Nix or Michael Penix or J.J. McCarthy? That's just way too big of a gamble in my eyes. The Falcons need to either A, trade for Justin Fields, or B, make a blockbuster trade to secure one of those top three quarterbacks, or C, make a plan of free agency to sign a quarterback, or D, and D's the scariest one of them all, 
roll the dice on Bo Nix, Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, and hope and pray that they can be valuable starters early on. Because this fan base and Arthur Blank, he didn't hire Raheem Morris to come in, bring a bridge quarterback while the rookie quarterback sits for a year or two. That doesn't seem like that was the plan going into this offseason. Plans can change, but I don't think that's what Atlanta's looking to do. Now, something that's been tossed down in the comment section a bunch is whether or not Atlanta could trade Kyle Pitts to move up to number one overall with the Bears. Chicago's got a good tight end in Kyle, uh, in Kyle, in Cole Komet, so I don't think they'd be all that interested in Kyle Pitts, but let me know. Would you trade Kyle Pitts in part of a package to move up or to get Justin Fields? Let me know, T for trade or P for pass. Some quick housekeeping notes I want to hit on here before I let you guys go. We got a super thanks from Jerry, 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 asking trade for Tyler Huntley. I like Tyler Huntley. He's a backup quarterback. Never forget his Pro Bowl appearance. Um, if Tyler Huntley fits what Zach Robinson wants his quarterback room to look like, there are usually two trains of thought for backup QBs. Get the best backup possible regardless of what the starter skill set is or get a Walmart version of your starter, which might not be the best available option, but it's the same t type of quarterback, so the offense would not have to change if you shifted from your starter to your backup. We'll have to wait and see what kind of quarterback the Falcons want to have and whether or not Tyler Huntley would be a good backup for that starter. Also, I want to give some love to those of you that watched to the end of the video. I put out a call a few days ago saying type ATL if you're still watching at the very end. And I just took the 10 first names I saw. So James Vaughn, Brian Davis, Cade, Samuel, DeAndre Pierce, uh, St Stantavius Barkley, Randy, Boyd, Jason Greenway, Mitch. Thank you guys and for everyone else that watches all the way until the end of the video. I cannot thank you enough for your support of the channel. And finally, you know that uh, SNL bit? I don't think SNL. The mean tweets with like Jimmy Kimmel or something, Jimmy Fallon. I want to look at some mean comments because we had some interesting comments over the last week. So I want to share this first comment here. This was a comment from our video about my mock draft where I went Malik Neighbors at number eight because Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jane Daniels were already gone. And Mr. Ron said, we need a damn quarterback. Okay, I know the Falcons need a damn quarterback, but you just want to pick a quarterback at eight for the sake of picking a quarterback, even if it's not a good quarterback? Or how about this one from Chris Stringer, or Stringer? We need a QB. I understand the Falcons need a QB. Unfortunately, with the eighth overall pick, I might not be able to guarantee the quarterback of the future at that spot. Uh, Jim Kings 32-something. QB is our biggest concern, and with the eighth overall pick, we get a wide receiver? I understand that, but once again, what would you guys do at number eight if Drake May, Caleb Williams, and Jaden Daniels are all gone? So now what's funny is in the video I put out a few days later, which was Atlanta Falcons' dream offseason, perfect offseason, which, hey, there's a level of implication of this might not be super-duper realistic, but that's the whole point of a dream, right? I had Jaden Daniels going to Atlanta at number eight. And you guys also didn't like that, saying... He's not, go he's not falling to eight. So first, I got to pick a quarterback at eight. And then when I do pick a quarterback at eight, he's not going to be there. Right? Boss 21. Jaden not getting past the Patriots. Can't win with some of you guys. It's tough out here in the YouTube streets. The YouTube comments can be a bit of a bloodbath. So it's always fun. It keeps you on your toes. Uh, for those of you still watching, by the way, I just wanted to run through the remainder of that NFL.com mock draft just to show some love for all of you still watching. So how about we just kind of sprint through this bad boy here? We've got the Giants and the Titans going offensive line at 6 and 7. The Chargers go number 8 with the uh, cornerback Terion Arnold. That was the Falcons pick. The Bears go Malik Neighbors at number 9. I know, the ball's on me to go Malik Neighbors at number 8 in this situation. The Jets go offensive line. The Vikings take Jared Verse. The Broncos go J.J. McCarthy. I see Byron Murphy defensive tackle to the Raiders. The uh, uh, the, the Saints, I beg your pardon, go edge. Brock Bowers goes from Athens to Indianapolis. Uh, moving on here, Dallas Turner, another edge rusher. He goes to Seattle at 16. The DB that everyone was talking about, the senior bowl, Mitchell out of Toledo. He goes to Jacksonville at 17. 
The Bengals take offensive lineman Olu Fashanu at number uh, 18. We got Nate Wiggins, a corner out of Clemson, going 19. Mims from Georgia, he goes to Pittsburgh at 20. Let's see, we got Kool-Aid McKinstry going from Alabama to Philly. We got a whole bunch of linemen going after that from Dallas and Green Bay. And to round out this mock draft, we've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at number 26, taking cornerback out of Missouri. The Cardinals taking offensive linemen. We got a wide receiver going to the Bills. How about the Patriots trading up to number 30 to take Bo Nix because they passed on a QB earlier in this guy's mock draft. So... That is our video today. I really do appreciate those of you who watch all the way through. So should we run it back? Let's run it back. Spam ATL down in the comment section if you're still watching.